Hey guys, Janice here. Before I begin, I would like to state for the record that this is one of only several controversial videos I will be releasing before I can finally get to the core of stretch-based exercise dynamics. In this installment of the Builder series, I'd like to talk about a hidden fifth type of muscle tissue. As most know, we have skeletal, cardiac, and smooth muscle tissue. However, in the last installment, I talked about how we have several more forms of muscle tissue and that endothelial cells are one such type. Today, I'd like to talk about perhaps one of the most intriguing and specialized muscle types of the entire body, connective tissue. Yes, you heard that right. It's a growing belief that connective tissue is in fact a mislabeled and highly specialized form of muscle tissue as it has long been known to have rather expressive contractile properties. In past discussions, I've touched base on the idea of phenotypal switching, this being smooth muscles entering a proliferative state and multiplying in number while also undergoing a strange metamorphosis into a secretory type cell that wraps itself in collagen fibers and then attaches these fibers onto the surrounding tissue masses. In this way, the vascular tissue is able to address nearly all the aspects of tissue mass building by using its very own cells in a highly plastic manner as to act as both a living scaffold and mechanical dynamo simultaneously. For centuries now, acupuncturists have taken note of pulses and pulling being felt through needles placed within layers of dense connective tissues, despite the wide-held belief that no contractile-based cells could be found within these dense matrices. In reality, however, this could not be further from the truth. The reality is that all connective tissue layers are derived from, or contain within them, various expressions of phenotypically diversified vascular muscle tissues. Keeping this fact in mind, it literally becomes almost a no-brainer that they would of course possess muscular-based tissue properties such as the ability to relax and contract. Or for that matter, the overwhelming strength of this type of muscle tissue whenever we take into account the properties of smooth muscle. Smooth muscle tissue is pound for pound the absolute strongest muscle tissue type found in any organism, touting numbers anywhere from about three to five times stronger than skeletal muscle, depending on phenotypal expression ratios. Connective tissue, or more appropriately called, phenotypically diversified vascular muscle tissues occupy the very highest order of the strength figures. This is how and why our bellies of skeletal muscle are able to be held in place by such a small and seemingly frail insertion point of connective tissue, pound for pound, that insertion point of diversified vascular uh, tissue completely outclasses every inch of that bolstering muscle, even at its maximal strength. Have you ever wondered why veteran power lifters seem to be able to lift just so much more just because of you know how they've trained their bodies a great example would be how they instinctively pulse their bodies before attempting a heavy lift you see without fully realizing it what they're doing is activating the still very present bayless effect mechanism inherent to vascular tissue based muscle types they're not lifting that colossal weight with only their skeletal muscle. They are in fact making their connected tissue layers contract along with their skeletal muscles to assist in the lift. Remember guys, pound for pound, three to five times stronger than skeletal muscle. Now you know why even the smallest power lifters can hoist such incredible weight. It's the miracle of vascular based muscle tissue types. So, how can we effectively target, stimulate, and grow this highly diversified type of muscle tissue? This question could not be any more simple, especially when we keep in mind the origins of this muscle tissue type. The best way to target, stimulate, and grow it is through intense capillaric activation and stretch. While it is widely believed that dense connective tissue layers are avascular, the reality as I have revealed it is that it is itself an expression of vascular tissue and therefore functions in a manner near identical to our blood vessels. This means that it responds in a similar manner to vascular based growth factors and cell signaling such as nitric oxide. For instance, in the presence of heightened blood flow brought about by intense capillary bed activation and therefore the subsequent influx of growth factors plus nitric oxide, 
Connective tissues have been shown to undergo a radical shift in both structuration and cell phenotype ratios, thus entering into a type of transient flux where the connective tissue layers appear to become overrun or broken down by vascular tissue when in reality the cells have switched to a higher energetic state, almost as if coming out of a trance-like slumber on a physiological level. In this way, even our most dense and seemingly inert connective tissues can heal, grow, and adapt to even the most harsh of conditions when given the time and nutrients. Well guys, that's it for this week's video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. If possible, I may try to illustrate this concept in future videos or seek to graphically represent it through various visual aids. As always guys, I'll see everyone next Sunday and I'm your host, Janice. Signing off.